He took his arm off my throat. Susan Haskell, One Life to Live. Pull, pulled off my underpants. He raped me. And the Emmy for Outstanding Supporting Actress goes to Susan Haskell. Thank you so much. I want to thank the people that mean the most to me. The Lord above, my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, Tom, and the cast, the crew, the writers, everyone at One Life to Live. I can't tell you how much you all mean to me. It's made me, I've had such a wonderful year, and I'd like to share this with the men and women that wrote to me and shared their stories. Thank you so much.
Marty. Marty, what's wrong? Marty, what's wrong? What happened? Marty? Can I come closer? A little closer, please? Are you, are you hurt? Were you in an accident? Did somebody... Marty, look at me. Did somebody hurt you? Did somebody attack you or, or mug... Marty, look at me, please. Marty, somebody hurt you. Did somebody hurt you? Marty, have you... second and do that. glad you came to me for help. Don't you feel sorry? Do you want to tell me what happened? No. You don't have to tell me anything, Marty. to me for help and I will help you.
Pardon? Marty, listen. No, I understand. Believe me, I understand how painful it is to talk about what happened, but... But you have to do this. You have got to come with me to the hospital no, now. Marty, I'm not Marty, going please. anywhere. Please, Marty, Marty, please, please. You have got to try to try, try hard to trust me now. You have got to go to the hospital. You're in pain and you are hurt. No, it's not that bad. I'm not going to go. Marty. OK. I don't, okay. I don't want anybody to see me. I don't want anybody to know about this. So make me go, Andrew. Marty, I know how much it hurts you to hear me repeat this. But you were raped. And you might have some serious injuries. I don't. You're obviously hurting. I, Obviously, it hurts you e to, to, to even walk, Marty. Please, please, come to I the I don't home. want to see anybody. I know, I know, but there are people there at the hospital who are trained to deal with this. And there are people there who will understand what you feel. And they will treat you with dignity. And they will treat you with respect and, and respect your privacy and your confidentiality. I don't want to go. I know, but Marty, please, please come with me. If for no other reason than, than just know how much I care about you. I can't. I'll go with you. I will go with you. I will stay with you as long as you want me to. You'll stay with me the whole time. I will. If you want me to, I will. You promise? I promise. Can we just stay here a little longer? Stay here as long as you need to. And we can stay here until you feel strong enough to leave. And then you'll go with me. Yes. Yes, I will go. And I will stay with you if you want me to. For as long as you want. And I will not leave your side. I'm glad I got back before the trial started up again. Me too. I, I got something for you. Reconditioned compressor, $375, labor, $80, tax. <laughs> no, I didn't get you a reconditioned compressor. <laughs> that was for my sister's car. Uh, the other side's for you. Special, just for today. This is another, it's another verse to teach me how to dream. Only see things in black and white, never shades of gray. This is great. You know, you, you're the only reason I feel like I can get through this trial in the first place. Now this. So you'll pay for the reach condition compressor? <laughs> Thank you. 
You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm so glad you're with me. Hey, you're here. Sweet. Welcome back. <laughs> Listen, Marty, I just have to finish going over a few notes. You know, I want to give you some last-minute briefing before you get back up on that stand. A little damage control, huh? Yeah, well, look, I don't want to make you feel any more pressured. But withdrawing your charges against Kevin Buchanan means that our whole case rests on your testimony today. Now, it's been your word from the very beginning against the defendants. And the only other thing that we've got to support your allegations is Carol Swift coming forward to say that she heard you screaming for help. Now, that's something, but it's not enough. And Nora knows that. She's gonna come after you. And believe me, it's gonna be rough. She's gotta be strong, okay? Hey, you got those files? Right here. Right. Oh, guys, listen. Last minute change in the lineup. This is Diane Raitkin. She's taking over for Kate Noonan. I just want you to know I think you're very brave. Thank you. All right, look, now, I think the best way to deal with dropping the charges against Kevin Buchanan is to face this thing head on. Try to make it an asset, not a liability. And Marty, your willingness to come forward to say that he's innocent supports your insistence that the other three are guilty. You really think that'll fly? It all depends on you, Marty. I'll be okay. Right. The last time I was on the stand, I was distracted and upset because I knew I was doing the wrong thing, insisting that Kevin was one of them. But um, I'm not confused at all today. It's all clear to me. Are you ready to resume? Ms. Saybrook, the last time you were on this witness stand, you told the court with considerable certainty that one of the men you had accused, Kevin Buchanan, had in fact not raped you. Are you still certain of that? Positive. Could you please tell the court why you withdrew your accusations against Mr. Buchanan? I was confused about Kevin um, because of the sequence of events. I mean, he came in the room where I was raped afterwards and I got mixed up uh, there was a lot I couldn't remember about Kevin then you remember distinctly that the other three defendants did what you accused them of objection your honor counsel is leading his own witness sustained I'll rephrase Miss Saybrook would you please tell the court what you remember about the other three defendants from the time they entered Mr. Buchanan's room that night I remember everything. Why is their behavior at that time so clear in your mind? I mean, when you yourself admit that moments before you had just been sleeping off the effects of too much alcohol. Because, because they were so out of control. I mean, they were like a bunch of wild animals that play with their prey before Objection. They... Your Honor, the witness is describing how she experienced the behavior of her attackers. I'll allow, but uh, let's not go too far afield. Please, go on, Miss Sabrook. All I'm trying to say is that because they were so scary and so out of control, I remember, I remember exactly what happened from the moment they walked in the door. I relive it every single night, whether I'm awake or asleep, I, I can't, can't get away from the memory of being locked in that room with those monsters. Objection, Your Honor. The witness is offering up a monologue. Sustained. You want to hear the facts? Miss Saybrook, let's talk about the facts. Would you please state for the record everything that you remember as it happened in Kevin Buchanan's room at Kappa Alpha Delta the night of the spring fling? I 
I was lying on Kevin's bed. I must have been asleep. And Todd, Zach, and Powell, they walked in the door. And they were grinning. They gave me the creeps. I didn't want to be in there with them. So I, I, so I tried to get away, but they stopped me. How did they stop you? They shoved me around. They, like, they tossed me from one to another, like a, was a basketball or something. So you were unable to get away from them? I did get away from them at, at, one, at one point for a second. What did you do? I tried to get out. But you were unable to do so. I, um... Todd got to the door before me and he wouldn't let me out. And what happened next? He... He's just... changed. Changed? Todd Manning? Yes, he... He, uh... Oh, he just became completely different. Different how? Angry. He was very angry. One, like, he was um, fooling around, just playing around, and then the next, he got, got angry. I thought he was gonna. happened then? He threw, sorry. He threw me on the bed. He kicked my legs out from under me and he fell on top of me. Okay, Miss Seabrook, now I want you to just take your time and tell us, as you recall, what happened. Todd, Todd told Zach to, to lock the door. And did Zach Rosen lock the door? No. I asked him not to, and uh, he said, fine. I won't. Then he asked Powell to lock it. Then did Powell Lord lock the door? Yes, he did. And then what happened? Todd took my uh, my wrists in one of his, one of his hands and just held them up, pulled them up over my head, and uh, held them out. You know, pinned me down with one hand. I thought that if I moved, I was going to dislocate my shoulders. What did he do next? You mean? Yes. Miss Saybrook, I, I need the specific details. He, uh, kicked my legs open with his knee. Did you try to resist this? And then he leaned and he put his other hand across my neck. Put a neck and he put it across my neck. I thought he was going to crush my windpipe, you know, so I turned to the side. But I, I, could, I could just feel my head. Pounding. Thought, thought he was gonna kill me. 
me. So you, you were immobilized. He, yes, he had my, he had his knees on my thighs, he had my arms pinned over my head and his forearm across my throat. I couldn't move. He took his arm off my throat. Pull, pulled off my underpants. And? Miss Seabrook, would you please tell us what happened after Todd Manning raped you? He held my wrists down and he, uh, he said to the others, who's next? And what happened then? Zach got on top of me. Couldn't believe this whole thing. I couldn't... I couldn't fight, so I, I just tried harder to scream. Scream harder than I did the last time. And what happened then? Zach stuffed a sweatband in my mouth. Did you try to resist this? Yes. My, my mouth was dry, and I, I tried to resist, but Zach And then? Zach raped me. What happened after that? Todd said it was time for Powell to take a turn. And did Powell take a turn? Yes, he did. He raped you. He raped me. Just like the others. Miss Seabrook, I know this has been a long, painful afternoon of questioning. But would you please tell us what happened next? They stood around. They... Like they'd won a football game or something. They were drinking beer and laughing at me. And did you try to leave at that point? No. Why not? I was in so much pain I could barely move. I was in shock. I, I didn't want them to do anything. I guess after a while, I just passed out. Thank you, Miss Seabrook. No further questions, Your Honor. Your witness.